Hello, my beautiful human creatures. How are we doing this evening? Just getting back from Horn Lake, Mississippi. Watching my son sing in his second choir concert. <laughs> Boy, time flies when you're having fun. So be self-aware if you have children of all of it. Because if you, I'm sure you already know it goes by just like that. Welcome to Center of Light. Tonight's topic is self-awareness, which is integral or integral, depending on how you like to say it, um, to your spiritual development. It is key, one of the major keys of your spiritual awakening. I want to say thank you to Tiffany Bramble for bringing this topic idea to my awareness. <laughs> and we're not speaking about let me see I can say this. She put this very carefully to me. She said, for people who truly know what self-awareness is, she wants me to talk about the benefits of self-awareness, not from a bragging point of view from everyone who actually has it, not from a cramming it down people's throats because we have it and you don't, it's more of an invitation to say these are the benefits when you begin to practice self-awareness. I'm going to do something real quick. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Center of Lights. And there we go. So tonight we're going to be talking about self-awareness and the benefits of having it, expanding it, the fun you're going to see in your life just by being able to experience how things move. Well, Keith, I know how things move. I look around every day and I see people scaring about, I see cars moving, I see life. How close are you looking? Are you really close? Well, Keith, you often say, shouldn't we have a pulled back perspective? By all means, you can still live in a different vantage point, a more esoteric perspective, but still look very closely. They don't have to be separate from each other. In fact, when you pull your perception back, you are able to see that which was hidden before simply appear. Very, very important stuff. If you like spiritual expansion and the benefits it brings, it's really important stuff. Self-awareness. What is it? What is awareness? The fact that you are hearing my voice right now, you are aware. I'm going to go through um, the setup from what self-awareness and awareness really is. And then we're going to move into the segment of this presentation about the benefits that I have personally experienced through the integral principle lesson spiritual modality, truth, to be able to see a greater reality. This is, this is no joke. Hopefully by the end of this presentation, I will have done my job that some part of you is going to awaken and go, oh my dear Lord. That's my goal. I want you to become aware, self-aware, not that you aren't already. I want to share with you what I know to be something that I see many people, a lot of people, almost everyone, who if only they had a greater self-awareness, 
I would be sitting down going, oh my God, look at this person go. Because some of these people, people I know personally, they have a fire. They have what it takes. I know there's no rush, but if they only practice self-awareness via meditation, whatever your way is to expand yourself inward the box, because there is no box. You keep going inward, you go inward, you go inward. There is no wall. The only walls are the one that we erect between the self and the outside world. If you go from where you are now, in, and in, and in, and in, and keep going in, there is no box. All there is, is pure, infinite potential. Wow. Everything that is everything and could be anything ever is in there. You calling this God? Is this another spiritual God show? Eh? It's in there. It's right there. And the more you go in here, and I don't mean like you're going on a goose chase or a rabbit hunt, or, uh, you squint and you, I'm talking about just relaxing. How good are you at relaxing? Anything else becomes taxing. It's about relaxing into yourself and relaxing into your experience and relaxing into the world and relaxing into your movements. Sometimes it is purposeful to be hard, cross, firm, but if you're going to play in that arena, you do it consciously. You do it with self-awareness because you know why you're doing it what the end game you're hoping for everyone is in it. But you got to do it lovingly. You can't just do it out of just reacting. Well, you can. The results are not going to be to your liking, nor is it going to be to anyone else. Awareness. I'm aware of what you said, Keith. Ah, that's awareness. But we're going to talk about different facets of awareness. As many as I can come up with tonight. Awareness. Do this. Touch yourself. <laughs> touch your body. Just touch it. Just do it. Well, Keith, I know I have a body. Touch your body. It's part of the class. <laughs> touch your body. You are aware that you have a physical meat suit. You space cowboy or cowgirl, you. You are cosmic. And you're sitting in your chair, laying on your bed, or whatever it is you're doing, looking at your gadget or a computer, and you're looking at me, and you're aware of the sounds coming out of my mouth, and you're aware of what I look like as I do all this stuff, right? You just became aware in two dimensions. The dimension of sight and the dimension of sound simultaneously. We're having a conversation on level levels. <laughs> Not many people think about. There's a lot more happening. And my communication to you, and you're listening with me, in this dance, than most people have ever known. Or would ever know it would exist to care about it. Now you just became aware of what I am offering to give to you for nothing. <laughs> Do a couple of announcements. We get down to the program. First order of business always. People in this room. I just love you. You are my life. Every one of you in your own way. Darlene, Carmen, Krista, Linda, Tiffany, thank you for the show idea. I'm enjoying the energy that is moving through my being in this moment right now. Via my awareness, my self-awareness, Pam Wood. I enjoyed my time, my one-on-one -on -one session with you, Pam. It was cool. You're a lot of fun. You got it together, girl. Uh, Natalie Lavoie. And Natalie as well. So a couple of announcements. Hello, Sherry Boudreaux. 
Where's that crazy man of yours? And if he's next to you, tell him I said, wildfire. Right? A couple of announcements. Sunday, May 19th, from 5 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, or 4 to 8 p.m. Central Time, email for obligation-free, love and light-filled details at everythingconscious at gmail.com. Everythingconscious at gmail.com. Let me tell you what this is about. Nori Love and I are doing a forgiveness freedom for our retreat. Here's the information I'm posting now. We're giving a four hour retreat on forgiveness freedom. What is forgiveness freedom? <laughs> How you like this? It just fell into my lap. Self-awareness. When you are self-aware in such a way that you realize, like I have realized, and still working, there's one right now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I have forgiveness for everything, including what, at least to my conscious awareness. There's one thing in my life I still have an issue with. And I could simply let it go. I can whatever reason I'm choosing to hold on to it I'm getting better I'm making I'm not making excuses I'm being honest but when you become self-aware of all the little hurts inside I'm aware of you you little bastard <laughs> you pull it out and when you pull it out you realize it's not a little bastard it's been your savior the whole time waiting for you to recognize it through self-awareness to release it but i understand when you approach such things it's like ah, it's a trial trial by fire are you willing to jump into the fire i have on many occasions i still do it is always scary no matter how much you get used to it every situation is different so it's a different leap but when you find these little unforgivenesses via your self-awareness, you no longer vibrate the frequency of having this show back up in your life. But also, the frequency of how often it happens, how frequent they stretch and start to leave you alone. What used to happen once a week now happens once every other month. What used to happen once every other month now happens once a year. This is how you shake off unconscious karma that is vibrating in your energy matrix on levels you are not self-aware of yet. So the shop retreat Nori Love and I is going to do on May 19th. It's going to be thorough. She's the gentle hands. Kid gloves. I'm the guy that's going to throw you in the fire. <laughs> it's just my nature. And they're both a purposeful. And we here, as lamp post, to coax you into that place, because it can be a little scary. And it can be a little hard to find the actual cave where it may be sitting sitting down so before i go to commercial break let me share with you before we get down to meat and taters when i get back what do you think these tibetan buddhist monks or any monk that is seeking enlightenment and he goes into the cave and never comes out however long it takes to find God within himself. He may only get up to use the restroom, eat, but he don't have to eat. Listen to this. Listen to me. He doesn't have to eat. That's impossible, Keith. He's so far inside of himself, the very creator that creates food in this outside world, he's tapping directly into. He doesn't need to eat. Still and all, what they're doing in these caves is they're forgiving everything. 
They're forgiving themselves. They're forgiving themselves what they did to themselves. They're forgiving the peop- themselves what they did to other people. They're forgiving other people what happened to them. And they're forgiving people who are no, 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 not even associated with the monk. They're just forgiving people. Releasing people from the karma. This is the importance of forgiveness. And it expands your awareness. Forgiveness. All those hurts, all those ones. Contact myself or Nori Love. The information is in here. Let's say hi to everyone just arriving. Wesley Islix, Sandy, Adana, Pam Wood, Rena, Jesse. We got 12 people over here. Natalie, Kelly Curtis, Darnell, Heather, Brett, David Emerson. I might have mentioned a few extra twice, but. That's how important you are. September 21st or 22nd, Metaphysic Four Points Spiritual Expo. I am a keynote speaker. Dr. Rita Louise is a keynote speaker. Larry Flaxman, Discovery Channel, Ancient Aliens. He's a keynote speaker. There's another beautiful lady, and I keep forgetting her name, and I'm going to look it up tomorrow. I'm going to stop this overlooking her. She's a keynote speaker. You can... Like and follow Circle of Q, excuse me, Circle of Chi. That's Circle of QI. I think this is on Facebook. To stay informed about the spiritual event. I'm going to have a booth. Healers, stone vendors, readers, just all that cool spiritual stuff. But it's all about education. Though you may have entertainment in, the, in a spiritual fair, Victoria Smith's game and goal is not for it to be entertaining, basically a novelty. You go to a spiritual fair and there's some cool things happening. That's cool. She has the fire. She wants to turn it up. She wants people to leave empowered. And she asked me to join her in this endeavor. Wow. The fire's going to get high and hot. Join me. Get on the road if you're from out of town. Arrive to Memphis a day early. Get here on the 20th. I play music all the time. Come hang out with me. We all wake up. We go get some breakfast. We all move to the fair. Exposition. The expo. September 21st, 22nd. $20 for both days. $15 per day. I'm going to be right back. And we're going to get to the thick of Tiffany Bramble's idea about self-awareness and the benefits of it. And for those who have experienced it. And we want to share with you. How delicious it is. You may say, well, I have enough already. Well, then if you do, please share it with me. Because I'm always willing to learn this nugget, this love nugget you may have. But I have a whole bunch of them for you tonight. Stick around. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchett. Yana va. Va. Peace. See you shortly.
Hello beautiful friends, Keith Anthony Blanchard here with an amazing product offer. We have been hearing about hemp oil for the last couple of years and its potential. Let me introduce you to my dear friend, Ms. Jackie Atwell. Our oil helps bring your body back to a state of wellness. It is also used as a preventative from illness. It works by bringing the body back to homeostasis and balance. It's a natural, organic, non-GMO, full spectrum oil third-party tested and comes with a certificate of analysis posted on our information page awesome anti-inflammatory and antioxidant if you are suffering in silence give it a try you have nothing to lose and everything to gain 60-day empty bottle money-back guaranteed refund to order go to www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell that's www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell Welcome to Center of Light. Light. I love this light. I am addicted to this light. I want this light. <laughs> I got it at Dollar Tree for a buck. It dwarfs my other one. But I had the other one for years, and I'm grateful to have had it. Boy, the saxophone in that last song I played is just nasty delicious. Wah! Let's see who just arrived. I love my peoples, my tribe. John Berthelot, Peter Coyle. Cindy Owens, Cheryl, Wesley. We'd said Wesley. Hey, Brother Wesley again. Steve Stone, what's up, my friend? Tonight we are talking about the importance and the benefits of self-awareness. Ready to have some fun? This is actually going to be fun. It's going to require your participation. And you will experience something you're going to experience something that as people we are so hard I'm gonna get you out of the hardness and you're going to experience something what you're going to experience is a part of you that has existed forever Wow! sounds cool doesn't it I want some of that seriously it's so subtle in nature. It's nature. You hear me? Itself. But because we're so loud in the mind and so busy in the mind, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, <laughs> it's too loud. Suddenly, within the silence, the new world simply appears it's like living in a fog bank your whole life and someone comes up with this amazing invention that clears fog <laughs> oh my god I can see pretty good I can drive down the road towards my destination without incident without karmic accident unconsciousness Self-awareness is so important to your spiritual life, development, expansion, reality, and salvation. Guess who saves you? You do. You save you. No one is coming to save you. In fact, not only is no one coming to save you, the one that is to save you has been with you the whole time. Yourself and your deity, Jesus, and your great-grandmother, Agnes, and Buddha, whatever represents love, power, might, and the highest good for all, has always been waiting to help you Save yourself. Okay, I understand that, Keith. Guess what it takes to do that? Self 
awareness. To experience the nature of who you are. That subtle, they call this literally, the subtle body. The subtle body. The part of you that is so subtle, it does not require the flesh and the bag of bones to experience. It's called the subtle body because it's the spirit body, which doesn't need the bag of bones. You know that you came here as a spirit <laughs> stuck in this meat suit. And on your last exhale, <laughs> you're out of it again. So again, I'm asking you, I know you know what your body feels like. Touch yourself. Okay. I am an invisible creature. Creature? No, you're a human creature. I am an invisible, angelic spark of the divine fire. I will live for eternity. In fact, not from this point forward to eternity. From this point in 360 degree direction, eternity. This is what self-awareness will do for you. You have to become aware. However, but it's never about force. Never about force. It's about source. Always about source. That should be your manna. That should be your hunger. It should be your yearning. It should be your churning. It should be your burning. You don't have to call your creator which lives in you, which ultimately at nature itself, because God is the nature of all things at your core. That's what you are. But it requires your awareness. Looking for a God up here is a beautiful thing. In fact, it's, 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 it's actually a requisite because it creates a humility inside of you. Whoa, there's a power greater than myself that I need to humble myself to and succumb my own will and egoistic nature. The ooh, ooh, ah, ah that keeps you from the core of what you are at the subtle body. Self-awareness. Self is not this thing. That is a self. That's the small self. We're speaking about the capital self. Capital self. The soul. And the soul is not it either. The soul does have a non-corporeal component. But what you're looking at on this screen, as you know, as Yanava, what you're seeing is the soul. The meat suit. That is the soul. I This meat suit that I... And do it again, please. Follow with the class. Touch your body. Become aware. Self-aware of this bag of flesh that has density. Density. Where does density come from? The world of something comes from the world of nothing. You can't get something. <laughs> Excuse me. What, what is uh, Wayne Dyer? Wayne Dyer. The world of the visible is always seeded from the invisible. It's always that way. Everything comes from the invisible. We look out to space and we see stars, planets. How many of us actually focus on the space? Wow, this is a beautiful starlit night tonight, don't you think? How many people you know says, wow. The vastness of space tonight is pretty romantic and sexy. You don't hear that, do you? You see, American, the American mind looks at the foreground, the stars. When they do art and they draw and they paint, everybody it's all about the foreground. Japanese, it ain't no foreground. It's the empty space. It's the background. Ancient Chinese proverb. It's the space between the bars that holds the tiger. Think about that. It's the space between the bars that hold the tiger. We think it's the bars, right? Because the bars are made of steel. 
The bars are irrelevant. You spread those very same bars far enough apart, that tiger can squeeze through. So we just had a shift in, in monumental proportions and perspective and perception. Foreground, the bars, the bars, the bars, the bars, the stars, the stars, the stars, the stars. <laughs> but it's the space, the space, the space, the space. Wow, I saw something, Keith. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> you had a shift in awareness. You had a shift in self-awareness. If you want to be honest, <laughs> you don't have to be. How many of you, and before I've learned of this principle, in this ancient proverb, I did as well. How many of you looked at a tiger in a cage and assumed the bars held the tiger? You can just be honest with yourself is enough for me. The bars is what's keeping that tiger in the no, it's not. <laughs> so that illusion was just shattered, was it not? Wow! <sighs> totally blown apart. Now, if this applies to this analogy about a simple tiger and bars and cages, wow, I can feel something welling up inside of me. And I, I want to tell you, because I have no idea what it is yet. You are the tiger. And we have all erected these walls, these steel cages from the world. The same world that you're trying to keep out with your cage is the same cage that will imprison you. The same walls you have erected in your life, where would people think? This, that, this, that, this, that. That wall that you have erected that keep people out or the fundamental idea of humanity out is the same wall that's going to jail you. And you become a slave to your own mind. And you live in a grind. And it gets harder to find yourself this is the power of self-awareness. Let me give you the definitions of awareness and self-awareness. I want to check something real quick. One second. This is for me. <laughs> Why you want to tag me some nonsense? That was for me, y'all. Thank you. All right, let's get down to some definitions. Now we're going to move into the lessons the nuts and bolts. Let's say hi to these beautiful sexy human beings. Karen Cox, Jackie Atwell. I just played your commercial, beautiful Jackie. Kitchen. Brother, I love your heel products. I love that shirt. In fact, I want, please can I order one of those shirts for you from you? I want a shirt, Keith. Uh Peter Coyle, back in the house. Keith, I'm serious. I want a shirt. TM Garrett, I want to see you again, sir, on my show. And I want to hang out with you because you're a knucklehead just like me. Tonight we're talking about the importance and the integralness. Integralness? I invented a word. An urban dictionary word called integralness. The definition of awareness. Tonight's presentation is self-awareness. The definition of awareness. The quality or state of being aware. Touching that body. That meat suit, I am aware that I exist. Knowledge and understanding. That something is happening or exists. That's the definition of awareness. Self-awareness definition. An awareness of one's own personality. Check this out. Or individuality. Did anyone else other than me catch what was being said without being said. Let me read it again. I want to be fair. I read this definition just now for the first time like you. An awareness, an awareness of one's own personality or individuality. Chew on that for a second. What this said to me is, 
definition of self-awareness. An awareness of one's own personality or individuality. Where does this one's own individuality exist? What was not said was out of the wholeness of everything, someone has an awareness of their own perspective and individuality and the sea of infinity of everything. Did you not hear that silently being spoken? An awareness of one's own personality or individuality. Individuality from what? You just had a shift in your self-awareness to a greater possibility of self-awareness. See, the reason I was able to pick up that message in the invisible and the silence, because I have learned through silence and self-awareness. Tiffany, thank you. Here's one of the benefits <laughs> of expanding your awareness. As I read this for the first time, as you heard it for the first time, I heard the words. I didn't hear the words. What was more important to me was the deliciousness of the invisibility but in, in everything that was not said. Self-awareness definition. An awareness of one's own, my, my, me, this me, my own personality or individuality. Individual from what? What is the what I'm an individual claiming to have this self-awareness about? This is a shift in awareness of monumental proportions. Do you feel what I'm sharing with you on an energetic level? Do you feel that? The tiger, the bars, the empty space. It was never the bars. It was always the empty space. The empty space that lives within everyone. That is where the potential, <laughs> like the tiger, for our freedom lies. The tiger, when he has empty space for those bars, those walls that were erected, he can slip through. When we live in that same empty space between the walls we have erected, we can have the same freedom. This is the benefits of awareness and self-awareness. I am getting so fired up, I cannot contain myself. The energy inside of me right now is so raw. And I'm riding it like a roller coaster on the front seat. And I'm ready to jump in. <laughs> This is the power and that which is integral for your spiritual development. Newcomers, I, newcomers, people here tonight. Ali Joseph, it's been a while, dear. Hi. Elwood Kowalt, Cheryl Davis, hello. I sent angels to you and I'm sending more. I will. I'm going to dedicate the rest of this show and the entire show, the energy that comes out of me and your reciprocation and that which you give back and I my reciprocation. I'm going to send this to Cheryl Davis, healing love and light energies for the betterment of her well-being in her highest good. How's that for a slew of angels for you, Cheryl? Blessings, dear. Wendy Kale from Louisiana. Cajun girl. Eddie Harris. Up so now that we know the definitions of awareness. I'm looking for my notes. I don't really have any. But the first thing I'm going to do after I read this little thing. Hello, Tammy. <laughs> after I read this little thing, I'm going to throw you. Stick around. It's going to happen in about two minutes. I am going to throw you into your spirit. I'm going to throw you into your subtle spiritual body that is often overlooked because of the ooh, ooh, ah, ah, <laughs> the monkey in the head. Get the monkey out the way, and then you get to experience your true nature. I want to read something to you. And I think I'm going to read this often in my presentations. Self-awareness. Though this thing I'm going to read you is titled Perspective, Perspective does fall or shake hands with his brother or sister Self-awareness. They're siblings. Perspective. 
Everyone should take the research journey upon themselves of any and all necessary to help anchor the light of unity, expanding humanity. It is crucial to question everything in today's world. There is a larger agenda at work and our inquiry must be diligent. I have followed many rabbits into many holes and more often than not, all I have ended up with was a handful of disgusting rabbit shit. There comes a time when what we were and are still being taught, programmed, watching TV programs, needs a pulled back perspective. In doing so, we can honestly see, we can see, self-awareness, we can see, both of the polarities, dark and light, at work. When one develops true sight, then one can have a powerful impact for the highest good. These are not only my findings and my ongoing blissful research for the absolute truth. These are also my experiences with divine, God-realized avatars. <laughs> Everyone still here, give me an exclamation point. It helps me to connect. It helps me to spin my energy into this finely woven cocoon of light to embrace you so that we use the force, Luke, together. We have a greater opportunity to feel it. Elwood jumps in. Of course he does. Kelly. And whether you're still here and you choose not to, that's okay. The fact that you, what you're doing right now, see, Allie gives three. Doesn't Kelly gives her birds. The fa what you're doing right now is you're plugging into an idea that we meet on a level that I'm about to help you experience. You're going to tell yourself, oh my God. I don't think there's any way possible that you can experience it. Okay. So we're going to go to commercial break. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Though what you're going to experience is a small glimpse of your true nature. The more you practice expanding your self-awareness, the more you will live in this nature. And the more you live in this nature, and you begin to stretch, you begin to expand. And next thing you know, it becomes your new default. Now you're living in a higher reality, ongoingly, because after so many days, it becomes a habit. What I would like you to do, if you are truly wanting to experience something, there is no devil I'm conjuring up. There is no demon I'm incanting. Please come in and... Let's slice a chicken. Ah, come on, let's be real. Let's get into this spirit of what we deserve and the glory of our Father that lives inside of us, our Father, Mother, the true nature of who we are at our essence. Just close your eyes. You close your eyes every night when you go to sleep. But now you're closing your eyes on purpose, with a purpose. And that purpose is, I want to experience more of the nature of my divine parent. How beautiful is that? just effortlessly rolled off my tongue and effortlessly falls in your ears. And you often write things and effortlessly you speak them because you like like me, you're living in love. It's just, it's just that effortless place, that effortless space. So you close your eyes on purpose with a purpose, with the intention of connecting to your divine parent. So you can learn how to expand yourself ongoingly to live in the nature and with the consciousness of your divine parent, more so every day, every day, throughout the rest of your life. So you can graduate and finally unify with your divine parent. So as your eyes are closed, breathe. Just breathe. No judgment. Breathe. Why am I breathing? No judgment. Just breathe. Deliciously breathe in. When you breathe in, hold it. Hold it. Just hold it. Hold it till it becomes uncomfortable. Hold it. Squeeze your face while you hold it. 
Squeeze your body while you hold it. Squeeze your butt cheeks while you hold it. Squeeze while you hold it. Now exhale and release the breath and yourself from the self-induced body. Release it all. Fall. Right? Really easy, isn't it? Wow, I just fell into a magical space that I wasn't in before. Phenomenal. Let's do it again. Keep your eyes closed. Breathe in deep like you want something, like you're digging. When you get full capacity, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze tight. Squeeze tight. Really tight. Really, really, really tight. See how tight as a human being you can actually squeeze. Squeeze. Let it all go. Whew. Fall. Right? <laughs> God bless you. And one final time. Breathe even deeper with a greater intention. Oh my God. Let's do this. Breathe. Salivate for that breath and take it in to full capacity. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. Squeeze, 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 squeeze even more. God dang it, squeeze, squeeze. Like we do everything in life. Squeeze it and hold on to it. And let it all go and fall inside of yourself. Stay in that quiet, simple, blessed, sacred space. Just stay there as long as you like. You can stay there for, I'll give it 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. Stay in. It's not abrupt. You don't have to just pop out. Be gentle with yourself. Lovingly exit this sacred sanctuary versus just abruptly getting out of it. That is not awareness. Be easy. Ease your way out of this sanctuary of spirituality, this spiritual subtle part of yourself, which you are. Now that you're in this energy, <clears throat> Whatever you do, don't take your eyes off of me. And as you do this exercise with me, move your breath. Breath is life. God is breath. God is life. Breathe that breath. And you don't have to force it, but just be conscious of the breath. And as you look at me, don't take your eyes off of me for no reason. As you look at me, become aware of your body. Look at me and touch your body. Oh, wow, I'm aware of this bag of bones, this meat suit. Well, pretty convincing, right? Keep looking. You're hearing my voice. The reason you are able to hear my voice is because you are aware. The reason you're able to see me is because you are aware. The reason you are able to see and hear me at the same time, multifaceted spiritual creature you are, is because you are multifacetedly aware. And as you hear and see me with those two dimensions, as you keep gazing into me as I share and impart to you something of a valuable nature that will change your life, it will not only save your soul, it can save your life, self-awareness. And as you look at me and you hear me, become aware of the space this far from you. Don't take your eyes off of me. Become of the aware, peripherally, of the space this far from you. How are you doing so far? Spiritual dynamo. <laughs> now, as you are hearing me, are you ready? We're going deeper. I'm going to throw you into your natural state. As you are looking at me and hearing me, and you are simultaneously aware of this, do you have a grasp on that? In this moment, you are aware of three facets of self-aware of awareness. Keith's voice, Keith's appearance, and what I am experiencing peripherally. Stay in that. Gently launch yourself to any sounds around you other than my voice. As you are looking at me, as you are hearing my voice, and as you are peripherally aware of what is around you, what could be, have been seen in the past as a blind spot, but it's not anymore because you're aware of my voice, my face, 
and this awareness of this over here. Gently insert some sound that's happening. The air conditioner, a car passing by, stay with it. That's the fourth component. Stay with it. Look at me. Hear my voice. Stay in the field. The field of pure, genuine awareness. As you have added sound. Now that we have my face, my voice, and peripherally aware of what's next to you, and you've added an external sound that you hear from wherever in your experience, feel what is behind you. Can you feel it? So now, oh my God, I am so freaking expanding. Can you feel this circular fisheye lens, 360 degrees perspective of who you are? Stay in it. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Breath is the key to not only staying in it, but to expand it to a greater capacity so you can feel more of who you are at your essence. Do you feel that? Stay in it. Breathe. How did you do that? How are you aware of my sight, my face, my voice, this over here, everything around you? That is called self-awareness. Congratulations. Now it's up to you for the rest of your life to be willing and wanting to play in that arena. I did it. I experienced it. I experienced it for about five seconds. Fantastic. That is fantastic. You've experienced five seconds of a greater degree of your true self than you ever have, possibly. So now is the wanting, the yearning, the churning, the burning, the desire, the divine fire that I'm willing to go through hell's fire to get to. When you have that kind of fire in your butt, in your gut, trust me, you will begin to live in that expanded awareness space more often, more often. Next thing you know, the intervals are so far, it seems like always you're living in this space and in God's grace that we were never ever to hear suddenly through the silence, the new world will appear. How many had an experience? Send me an exclamation point. How many of you had an, a super conscious, expanded awareness experience that was, oh my gosh, I feel that. Send me an exclamation point. <laughs> Brenda, Kelly. Elwood. Puri. Puri wa puri hapakuku. Sani, I am here. Yes. Ali says, I feel the underlying presence witnessing the awareness. My God, that is exactly it. You are the underlying presence witnessing the awareness. So actually, what you are saying, thank you, Ali. I was going to talk about this and I didn't and slipped and I'm so, and you're so correct. Consciousness is exactly what Ali just said. I feel the underlying presence witnessing. That's the consciousness, the awareness. So what the consciousness is, it's the presence. It's the observer. It's the so pulled back perspective that I can't pull back any further. God. The awareness of the consciousness is more of a tool. It's my tool. I am aware. Consciousness is what you are. I exist. That's consciousness. And I will always exist. Awareness is the lens. It's the, the tool. It's the faculty of using the consciousness to do a something with. Everyone had an experience. Fantastic. That touches my heart. Congrats. <laughs> take that in. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to play a song called Angel of Love. If you're in that subtle presence, stay in it. 
my my presentations are always about handing you something at least for not that you have it take this time stay in that subtle vibratory energy that place that you have experienced oh keith i lost it though it's okay your intentions to stay in the residuals is enough stay in the subtlety let the music move you become aware the subtle nature of your awareness can when I get back, we're going to talk about what Tiffany was asking me to do this presentation for, the benefits. This song I'm going to play before I come back and talk about that segment is about being so subtle in your awareness that you can experience an angelic being in your bedroom. Listen to the lyrics. Fall in. Be with yourself.
Welcome back to Center of Light, all my beautiful friends. Tonight we're talking about self-awareness. It's important to your spiritual development. I want to continue with something that beautiful Ali said. I'm so excited that everyone had an experience. That's amazing. You went from what we know as our normal self to this expanded self. And then Ali interjects, I was aware that I was so in observer mode that there was a level of me down here that was aware. So that's another rung of the ladder. On your own, you can practice the technique. You can look at a glass. Look at a glass. We need a fixed point to give the monkey a banana. So as the monkey gets what he wants, I, as the observer, can fall back while the monkey plays in the sandbox all he wants and gets all dirty and nasty and do something else with my spiritual self. Right? That is being the observer. That's another level. So as you focus on this glass to practice your awareness expansion, I'm focused on the glass. I'm aware of the peripheral around me. I hear sounds behind me. This is one aspect that you have graduated to. In your daily practice, when you can become aware of the awareness, that's another level. You can do this driving your car. You can do this taking a shower. You can do this sitting on your throne in the bathroom. So wherever you are, you're driving down the road. You're focused on the road, obviously. You don't want to take your eyes off of the road. You're self-aware of your surroundings and what you need to do. You're focused. Now, focus on the cars moving by. You don't have to take your eyes off the road. You see it happening. Your blind spot now becomes visible because you are expanding your awareness to take it in. Now you're hearing the sounds of the cars. Now you feel you can barely see an airplane moving across the sky. This is all awareness expansion. Elwood says, I let the monkey drive. <laughs> Facebook laugh poke broham sandwich. <clears throat> so now we're going to go into this. I think I have two more segments, to be honest with you. I want to do a little bit. Sharing with you per Tiffany's beautiful request, and I'm so enjoying this ride. I want to see who's here. It helps me to spend my energy. Brenda Smoke, Darlene, Jackie Atwell, her Jackie, Kelly Curtis, Allie Joseph, Pam, Elwood, Krista, hey Linda, and Rinage, Rinage, Rena. So, the benefits of expanding your awareness. You just experienced it. What greater benefit can there be than to have that aha, oh my God, did I just, did this really just happen? Yes, it did. If that's not enough of a benefit, let me tell you some other benefits to expanding your self-awareness. You're walking down the street, having fun, unaware because you're having so much fun nobody's saying you can't have fun and be self-aware <laughs> that you forget that you are in a potential not so good neighborhood or section of town it's not doom and gloom it's not fear it's fact you live on the earth plane and all the components and all the rules apply so don't you want to be self-aware to know that, look, let me tell you something. 
when I used when I played on Bill Street, and I get off at eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock at night, I don't walk on the sidewalk. Not because I'm afraid, because I'm not stupid. I don't walk on the sidewalk this way nor that way. First thing is I use my awareness to see how many people, how crowded it is, so I can make my first decision is how to navigate. Navigate not only in physical life on Bill Street, in my life, period, how to navigate, because I'm aware. Basically, I have an awareness called a GPS. I have a global positioning system, a God positioning system. So I have a better understanding of what I'm dealing with in a situation that I consciously chose to put myself in, said Bill Street, late at night, which can be potentially not a fun thing if you're an unaware person. So I walk in the middle of the street because it gives me a greater capacity of expansion to understand my surroundings. That's one benefit of practicing and developing your self-awareness. Feels right? That shoe fits, doesn't it? Nicely put it on your foot. Use it. It's powerful. You deserve it. Self-awareness also helps you to understand who and what you really are. You've experienced that. Oh my God, was that just a fluke? No, that's your natural state that you've experienced between lifetimes and special moments in your life. So the question I pose is why are these special moments not the ongoing fluidness gradation of my life ongoingly forever to live in bliss? I can't answer that for you, but I can tell you, for me, I strive, relax into it every day, every moment. It opens the door wider. Self-awareness creates the lack of problems. Self-awareness allows the one who recognizes the problem when there is no problem that opens the door to greater degrees of bliss, peace, and ecstasy. What more could a person want? Self-awareness helps you to help other people in a way that is more powerful and beneficial than what we have known until we became aware. Self-awareness. I am so aware It falls right there. Naturally, when you practice self-awareness, it's, <laughs> what's the saying? When things come back to center, when you practice self-awareness, you naturally resolve back to center. That's when you enter a greater capacity of the very same self-awareness and beyond that Ali said earlier, that she became so self-aware in the exercise that she became the observer of the one on the lower tier practicing awareness expansion. Awareness can save your life. Awareness can save your soul. That is how important awareness truly is. How many times have you been blindsided 
by someone who sucker punched you, literally, someone who sucker punched you, figuratively, life, what they call blindsiding you, it blindsided you because you're not self-aware. Because if you were self-aware, you would have cleared up any karma that can ever come back and blindside you. Clearing up the karma means I'm clear. I don't have to have this backlash come and ring my bell to say, do you understand me now? I understand you now without the headache from something blindsiding me and smashing me in my head. This is a benefit of expanding your awareness. And in all fairness, I understand you may not be there yet, but I promise you, and you can bet, it has nothing to do with fret about your life. It's about being easy on yourself, being very, very easy on yourself, and relaxing from the world of that which is always taxing. So before I go into my final segment, what is awareness? What is awareness? What is awareness? I'm aware I exist. Shh. <sighs> ah, I am aware that I exist. I am truly aware that I exist. <sighs> so forth and so on. And your muscle, your awareness muscle begins to expand. And now you have big old spiritual muscles. Not only can you lift any weight spiritually, you're so good at it, there is no more weight. There are no more shackles. You're done with it. So there is nothing spiritually because of your awareness that you cannot lift because through your awareness expansion, my dear cosmic brother and or sister, you have lifted. <laughs> I'll be right back. I have no doubt I'm going to go into vessel mode. Yanava is likely, I'm, I'm sure of it, going to speak. It's all It's all your choice. Remember that all things are possible. All things you are possible. Must choose you must choose to be accountable, responsible, enough to believe, and open your heart. Follow that inner voice inside 
Welcome back to Center of Light, final segment. Thank you very much. So I can expand, expound, create another layer of goodness, toppings, sweets, whipped cream, about self-awareness. I want to read you maybe two or three very small things about awareness to further the lesson of what awareness is. It's going to paint the picture a little greater. Now, this is from the Divine Principle of my conversation with Spirit. Give me one moment. Shortly, one of the first things I vessled with spirit. Those who choose to live by the ideas and principles I present herein, this applies now, will awaken from your dream of separation and shift into a higher reality, that self-awareness that we talked about, that you've experienced, that will enable you to consciously reunite with me, meaning spirit. So I implore you, to not only read or hear these words with your ears, eyes, but with your heart. For doing so will open you even more to receiving my intent, spirit's intent, and spirit's energy. All that <laughs> I am. I have miracles for all of you. Seek them with sincere intention and I shall grant you the awareness of that will cause them to appear suddenly through the silence the new world appears the spirit self or body the spirit is the aspect that descends as we talked about earlier and to a body to partake of the human experience the spirit self or body, that subtle body. It creates and governs, it creates and governs all that is you. The spirit works in conjunction with your own awareness to bring about what is beneficial for you and your evolution so that you can one day embody the divine principle. You already embody the divine principle. It's the awareness that helps us to become aware of it. (laughs) 
the problem humanity is having is that you have gotten so wrapped up in the drama of life just being too much that you have forgotten to look to me for relief. What I am trying to do here is unleash my reality within you so that you can have your relief and your fun. I am granting you awareness so that you can finish what we started and experience my glory, that place Ali spoke about, the one beyond the awareness expansion. I am granting you awareness so that you can finish what we have started and experience my glory at a conscious level. You got a glimpse of that through the experiment. All you need to do, as Ali said, <laughs> all you need to do is be a conscious observer, part of our great creation, and begin to have my kind of fun, is look within your own heart. And this readily available place, space, is where you will find me. Welcome, dear ones, even though there is only one, as you see yourself as fragmented, it's okay. Individuality is a beautiful thing, but where did you come an, indiv an, an individual from? That's awareness. Ah, I'm a part of a something as to why I am a one part of the something that is the whole. What an amazing shift for you that you have experienced. But you're not as fragmented as you think. Even in what you may claim as the broken parts of you. Those pieces. Those broken parts of you. It's okay to see it as parts of you may be broken. As it is being spoken. But don't be choking on it too long. When you are the wholeness that sees the fragments. You begin to mend the mirror reflection of you as you have sat on the lap of God for eternity have you ever chosen or how, or how often do you choose to turn around and see who is looking at you as you sit on the lap of God and when you do you will realize the reflection of your divine parent as the child of light that you are one day has to grow up and become a parent yourself reflection self-awareness I am so subtly aware of myself and my surroundings that I'm no longer aware of my surroundings I'm aware of myself and in that subtle spiritual awareness nothing happens without your permission that's how self-aware you have become when you reach that point story time a master is sitting in a valley meditating actually he's not meditating that's just the position he is in because he is the lightning rod he's not meditating to be with a something he is the something anchored and this may whatever the posture may be as an expression of the light that comes through thee but there is a potential assassin on top of the hill hiding behind a tree as he draws his bow to assassinate the master. One, what would, for one, does the master misfire the bow? Because he's so self aware. <laughs> does the master allow the bow to fire but miss the mark which would be his back through his heart or a few other options that could go down the true answer is 
one who is self-aware is not in that position in the first place. That is true awareness. You may not be there yet, but in all fairness, you have been presented a template, a model that you could follow the divine rabbit into the divine hole. And you could bet it's a white rabbit. Get out of habit of the old, move into the new, and become sold on this idea so much so it's all you want. Question from spirit to you. Take this in to that white rabbit hole. Tonight, Yanavaso, that question is, what do you want? <laughs> Simply, what do you want? Self-awareness will bring you exactly what you want versus that which will only haunt you. You're living in a plague, dear ones. Or are you? It's not time for being vague. It's time for sharing, expressing, understanding, self-awareness, consciousness, what you are, who you are, where you are, if there is such a thing, if this is a, there is a where. You hear you're there, you hear you're there, you hear you're there. Regardless, even when you're there, you're actually here. Because when you're there, what do you say? Someone asks you, where are you? You say, I'm here. Very, very powerful analogy for you. No matter where you are, you're here. Dear, self-awareness, you've experienced it all night long. Continue the dream, if you will. Because literally, that is what you're doing. You're either dreaming or nightmaring. Where life is not so beachy, you are nightmaring and you're not self-aware. How simple can that be? Don't you see? Don't you see? Where there is no joy in your life, you are nightmaring. And there is no comparing that to anything. Because in that moment, you are deathly afraid. Aren't you? Why don't you forever live in dream? Why? Is that not where the beauty of your life is? Is that not where the beauty of who you are dwells? Hell comes across your mind too often. It doesn't matter when you physically pass because in that moment, that is where you lie in your coffin. And you feel like you're dying inside. Why? No self-awareness in that aspect of your life. Joy is always the evidence of God. Self-awareness not only serves you in greater capacities, the most important component of self-awareness is the joy, the peace, the bliss, and the ecstasy you feel in expanding back into your divine parent as the divine parent speaks to you now. When will you choose to come home? Play all you like. There is no curfew, but there are only few of you that choose to return to divine consciousness. And it's okay. Have fun in your metaphorical human sandbox. But when you're ready to get out of the box, spirit leaves that year.
Thank you for joining me tonight on Center of Light. Subject tonight was self-awareness and how important it is. It is so important. Self-awareness can save your life. Self-awareness can save your soul. If you are just arriving or in the future, watch this presentation in its entirety. There is a spiritual love nugget in this presentation and it costs you nothing. You look in this forum, I have some, don some links, one of them is a donate link. helps me to stay alive in doing what I love. And what I love is catering, helping, loving, appreciating you. I will see you soon. Peace, love, and always live in the light of awareness. God dang it, awareness is so important. Blessings, 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 blessings.